my uncle was a real estate developer. And I used to spend hours in front of these little models, you know, just kind of like look, peering in at these little cars and trees. It's one of my earliest memories. And I, my, parents, my parents told me that I was like six years old when I, want, I said I wanted to be an architect. And I think if you spoke to any of my teachers along the way, they would have told you that, they would have asked you, did he become an architect? One of the mantras that I tell people is that the most important thing you'll ever design is your own path. And I do believe that. Like, you have to design your own path. Like, it's not sitting there waiting for you like it used to be. And choosing what you want to do and choosing how you want to do it is really important, which led us to this innovation experience design office where we can be called in to work with architects because we're really, really focused on taking ideas and making them a reality but thinking through the experience, thinking through the why of a project. Can you teach someone to be innovative or is it something you see a kernel? Because I imagine, you know, I looked at everybody out there and you create a culture of like-minded people or you see a spark in somebody. What's that thing when you're interviewing for a team that you know, ah oh, yeah, that's the person? It's passion, right? And passion in combination with rigor, all I can do is challenge people. You seem to me to be someone who really focuses on being present, and there are not a lot of people like that around. Do you work at that? You know, one of the things I tell people, and I'm really telling myself what I'm telling other people, is seek balance, right? Because we do, we seek a lot of things. We seek happiness, we seek wealth, we seek health, we seek success, right? But for me, I've really learned that you need to be present and you need to seek balance. And you can't predetermine what you think will make you balanced. You're a native by choice. I'd worked in Paris, I'd worked in Spain, I'd gone to school in Italy, I'd lived up in Canada. When I finally got here, I just was like, I'm done, this is exactly where I need to be. New York City to me is like pure vitality. There's no space for, well, I don't know, I'm just hanging around, we'll figure it out. There's, there's, no, there's no time for that, it doesn't have any patience for that. You feel the kind of essence of people chasing their dream everywhere, right? You know, we had a symposium here that asked the question, how do we protect New York from becoming a museum city? How do we make sure that art is still made here? Right, because if it's not, then we will become like a Vienna or a Venice or a Paris where you go and there are amazing places, but you talk about where things used to happen. And I think that that is, um, that is at the, for us that's at the core of understanding from a New York-centric perspective, how you create the sort of diversity and protect it, right? You don't just allow this thing to gentrify and push out the things that people loved about it. You're taking human experience, the experience of being human, and looking at the emotional systems of people and how they relate, and you're putting that into every conceivable environment where a human bees, you know, where a human is. It's looking at it from the inside out. This is really interesting. To me, as we're starting to learn it, our core is understanding that spaces are built from emotional memory, right? And if you can apply that to a nightclub, you can apply it to a cancer facility because what you're really doing is understanding how people interact and what interaction you want, what emotional response you want, right? And so we're kind of learning that the core isn't, well, I've got to make drawings and sections and elevations. The core is understanding human nature and behavior. And now that's become like this amazing wellhead of thinking for us. It's like we're able to apply that all over the place. And that's really exciting. It was not a showcase club like the improv profession as we started at that time. We presented talent in New York. It was kind of what they called the first little yuppie nightclub in New York. 